Okay, so in this video, you're going to discover how to create something like this with free tools. Okay, in in particular, AI, artificial intelligence, and it's just mind boggling what is happening online with the different tools trying to outdo each other with artificial intelligence. The reason I'm so excited about this is you can create digital downloads that um, basically have no restrictions on them because an artist didn't doesn't have any claim to them because an artist didn't create them. It's a compilation of pictures that these robots are creating. So as time goes on, you know, that might be a different story. But for right now, um, if you create something with AI within the tools that I'm using, you're free to use them and resell them. With that being said, let's go into Etsy. And this is what inspired me. I went into Etsy and I put wall art for children, which is a highly competitive niche. But if you use a keyword tool, this shows you the competition. You can get an idea of what to list, how to list something that's really cool. And this is what came up, bug wall art. I thought bug wall art. Well, you know, kids love bugs. Not all kids, but a lot of kids. And then there's, um, there's Jesus with children painting. There's patchwork wall art for children. Look at that. So then I started thinking because um, I'm new to AI, the graphic generator, and I thought I'm going to go into Canva because I have played around with Canva's AI tool. And I am going to put in, you know, some prompts. And what a prompt is, is just words that you put in to describe what you want the website to create for you with artificial intelligence. So I put in... And I did this several times until I found something I liked. Um, so as you can see, these are these are some of my <laughs> earlier things. I, I really like ladybugs, so I was asking it to do ladybugs, but this one looks like it's not quite right. And when I asked it to do bugs, I thought, well, I'm not sure if these are accurate. <clears throat> are these really are these real bugs? So I thought, hmm, I wouldn't want a child to grow up thinking, you know, a bug looked a certain way and it, it was not, it was not correct. So I started generating, I put in, if I can get this to go down, let's see. Okay, I put background, use a soft pastel watercolor wash as the background. Consider light shades of pink, blue, green, and yellow for a harmonious look. For the arrangement, create nine distinct rows, each containing a different type of ladybug. And I, and then I ran out of characters. So the first time I sort of, I thought, I'm just going to sort of wing it. And I said, make, um, make a graphic that is a watercolor in design for the nine most common bugs, which I don't know what they are, in the United States. And put them in rows. So this is what it spit out. And I thought, well, that's pretty cool. But I, I don't know if this is accurate. Is this accurate as far as, you know, do they all have the right amount of legs? And what is that? Sort of looks like a dead cockroach. So I'm like, I don't know. This one is, you know, aesthetically pleasing. But again, I don't know if it's correct as far as, um, is you know, is this a real bug? I don't know. This one, it looks like it's getting closer to something that... Um, is real but again i thought you know i'm not sure if the colors are right so then i thought okay ladybugs let's just do ladybugs i know ladybugs so i did this but then it did this weird little thing right here <laughs> and i'm like what what i'm not sure about that so then i tried again and i got this and again it says we are evolving this new technology so please report this image if it doesn't seem right so then i did this one i really i think of all of them this is my favorite one right here of course, I don't know if there are real ladybugs that are this color, with a little green and this color. So I thought, I don't know. And this is sort of, you know, like whimsical, but still a little, they're sort of misshapen. 
and then I did it again and I thought that's really cool but again the ladybugs are not like in real in real life I don't think they're all these different colors so I thought I'm gonna try again and so I thought what what how do I do this so I did a little research and I went into um, chat GPT and I thought I'm gonna ask chat GPT if it will make me a poster well then I learned that the free version only does text you have to upgrade to get the image generation I thought I'm gonna do this on a free free plan so I said create a poster and it said I can't because you have to go pro you have to upgrade this is the freebie but I can help you with a detailed description for your poster illustration. Here's a concept you could use. It's also known as a prompt. Okay, so Charming Lady of the U.S. So I copied this prompt, and that's what I put into Canva, which, you know, and I got that as a result. I got the ones that I just showed you, these. I thought, well, those are cool. This one's my favorite right here. And you can stretch it out, make it a poster, whatever. Um, and then I thought, I'm going to go look back in Etsy. And then what came up was alphabet wall art, A to Z. And I thought, oh, that's an interesting concept. So I went back to, I keep coming back to that. And I will come back to that at the end. So hang on there. So I said, I need a prompt, you know, illustrative words for image generation to create a children's wall art poster of alphabet wall art a to z in water supposed to be watercolor and this is what it gave me create a vibrant and whimsical children's wall art poster showcasing the alphabet from a to z in a colorful watercolor style each letter should be uniquely designed with playful illustrations that represent words starting with that letter for example a for apple b for bear c for cat okay so I tried to put that in there and before I could copy and paste all of it, this got cut off. So this is what it spit out. This in course it's A to Z, but it starts with E. So um, I, I wouldn't choose that. And this one is interesting. But, you know, that's something really weird there. I don't like it. It looks all messy. So that, that wouldn't be my choice. And this one is not A to Z. It is A to Z, but it's not correct. But this one, boom, 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 chakalaka, chakalaka. This one I love because you could say, um, you could actually make a poster for a child's room or a baby's room that starts with A. So you could say, you know, um, does your baby, does your baby's um, name start with A, you know, download this lovely poster. And what you could do, I don't think you can edit this. No, you can't edit it really to change the image. Okay. But anyway, that's one idea. That's what I came up with. I thought, wow, that is super, super cool. Here's plan B. Okay, if I'm going to go back to what I've already been doing in the past is um, Creative Fabrica has clip art that can be used with full POD and commercial rights, meaning you can take the elements and create something unique to resell it. But again, do your own due diligence and uh, read the commercial and full print on demand usage rules for yourself okay i'm not an attorney so it's not legal advice so you you need to go read that and it's awesome and um from what i understand my understanding is that you have to create something new that doesn't compete with the artist so if i were to take these elements and download them to my computer which i have done many many times to create unique um designs and it's super fun. I love this site. I love it, love it, love it. I also pay for Canva's pro version every month and I pay for Creative Fabric every month. And it's so worth it. And it's tax deductible because it it's a tool in my business. So, okay, so I downloaded this. 
and then I can go back into Canva. I'm going to move that over there. I'm going to go to the upload, upload here. I'm myself over here with the ladybugs. And then highlight that. I'm just going to highlight that open and they will all start uploading over here. Isn't that fun? Look at that. So then you can Google. You know, how do I make poster wall art of different sizes? And on Google, it'll tell, it'll tell you all the sizes. And then you can actually go back to the beginning and do a custom, custom size. Look at that. Oh, that's so, so cute. So cute. And again, I mean, these are not, um, you know, maybe... They're not real life. They're just like whimsical, cartoonish, which I love. And I, my favor, the watercolor colors always have. So if I go back to home and I want to create, let's just say, um, you can do it by dimensions once you find out. Just Google different sizes of what people sell. Um but if I just want to start with, I'm just going to put a poster. And see, it has all different sizes right here. So if I were going to do an 18 by 24 poster, and you could do it and then use their resize button and resize all of these and download each file. Okay. So I'm going to go back to my uploads. There they are. Now, see, it's not showing all of them. For some reason, I'm gonna do it again. So I want all of them in there. I've noticed when I have the Canva tab open in another tab that it doesn't always save to the current tab, if that makes any sense at all. Okay. And then, you know, I can just start like pulling these little rascals over and resizing it. And they're loading, loading, look at that cute, cute little thing. Okay, so if I'm, gonna, I'm just going to do bugs. Just going to do the bugs. Oops. <laughs> Says I as I put a leaf on there. Okay, all right. I can do that for a little accent. Okay, so I'm going to do a little ladybug there. Dragonfly there. And you could just play around with this. That's an ant. Of course, that's not like life size. Another thing you could do in Canva is you want to you want to make them all like the same dimension. When you're pulling it out, it shows you like 5.6 width and height is 5.6. So you could sort of try and make these all the same size, 5.6. Okay, it doesn't have to be exact. If you're a perfectionist, you will want to make them all exactly the same. I'm not a perfectionist, so there you go. And then this little ant, 5.6. Okay. And then let's see who else we have over here. I don't know what this, I've seen this kind of bug, but I'm not sure what his name is. If you know, please put in the comments. And tell me, you can school me on what kind of bug this is. I don't know if it's a stink bug. I don't know what it is. I'm going to put that right there. And then let's see what else we have over here. Oh, we have a butterfly. Oop. Okay, so we have a little butterfly. 5.6. Yeah. And again, what is so fun about this is you can just be as creative as you want to be. And since I'm doing my own unique art, I can resell this online. Okay. Now, if I wanted to add some little, you know, flower accents, I could do that. Oops. 
And see, I can do the undo button over here because I cut it off a little bit. I'm going to squeeze it and we'll put it up in the corner. So the advantage and disadvantage of this is you have to, you know, do the arrangement yourself, but you have more control over the design. So it's a trade-off, pros and cons. But I love Creative Fabrica and I love Canva and I love ChatGPT. All right, so 5.6. There we go. And then and I just want to make it colorful. So I started with the bugs, kind of accenting with the flowers. And again, I'm going to go like 5.6-ish. And what's wonderful is I'm not an artist, but these artists with the paid membership allow us to download their wonderful art and use it for our own creations, which is what we're doing right now. So 5.6. There we go. And then, I mean, you could do like, if you're going to sell this, um, online and you want to say I will customize this poster for your child's room for example um, and you don't have to do just Etsy you could do it on your own blog you could do it on a stand store you could do it on Gumroad store uh, the the advantage of Etsy is that it's already got people coming to buy but if you do it on your own store you can just do Pinterest pins and get people to come see your stuff okay so if I want to do like so school bell and I'm going to do text do like Mindy and that's not school school bell Look how cute is that and then you could do like an element, like a little square. And just pull it up. And then you can do this. This is what I love about Canva. So if I click on the color of that little square on the background, it will tell me the colors in the photo that I can match the background too. Look at that. So one of these colors is this color. So cute. And I can move that up. And then you can play around with the background. You can add a background like that. gradient oh so cute look at that that sort of looks like school um, let me see if I can put baby couldn't find any background with baby children oh. I don't want that, so I can just undo that. Don't want coffee in there. Don't want money signs. Okay, but that's an example. And then you would share, and you could download it as a JPEG, a PNG. Best for printing, you could do a PDF. And then again, like I said, you can, um, you know, up here you put the size of whatever this was we chose. And then you could resize, custom size right here. And you could, you could just put in, in inches, the size that you wanted to offer, you know, in the poster sizes. So do a little research on Google if that's what you want to do. 
and just go on to Etsy and you can see what sizes people are offering these in and to get some more ideas about styles of children's wall art that are selling. But that is like plan B if we did plan A using just AI. Go back to my home because Canvas saves your projects, which is awesome. So if I go back to my bug example, and I wanted to sell this, you know, all I'd have to do is um, download it and then upload it as a PNG and change the sizes to to list it for sale. Same thing with this um, alphabet, this one here, the A. That is so cute, seriously. That is really, really cute. That's something like you see in um, Target or Walmart or Marshalls or, you know, that people could just download or send to like CVS or Walmart to print out in color and then put it in a frame, boom. I mean, you could do that for somebody's gift. And what is awesome about this is it's instant downloadable. It's nothing that you have to mail. People don't have to wait, you know, for it to be shipped. And super cool. So I tried AI. This is what I got. Plan B, you can create your own, you know, wall art to sell with, you know, Creative Fabrica. I hope that helps. Let me know what your questions are and what your comments are. I appreciate you being here. Please give me a like and subscribe. And let me know what you'd like to see some videos about that I know enough about to tell you about. Okay? This is Christy. Talk to you soon. Bye now.